It's not every day you come across a type of technology like the acoustic surface that's been implemented into the A1E, right? There's guys out there, websites, video reviews, they're gonna tell you about the signs and the statistics behind why this TV is so good. But here today, I'm gonna give you the layman opinion on it, my layman opinion on it. You know, after owning it for about a month, there's things I like about it, there's things I don't like about it. What I did to try to rectify that was use Artink's picture quality settings to make it as calibrated as it possibly could with a few of my own little adjustments. And you can check them out in the description below. So what makes this TV so great? Well, I mean, it's very bright. That's partly the reason why I'm wearing shades. And as expected, the HDR is phenomenal. It's amazing, it excels in this department. The image quality, no matter what you throw at it, is gonna be the best, best TV on the market right now. YouTube, Netflix, standard Blu-rays, 4K Blu-rays with HDR, and gaming, they all look like they should. The best way I can describe it is however that Blu-ray or however that game looks and those screenshots are on the back of the box in the store, that's the way it's gonna look when you watch it on the Sony A1E, whether it be the 55 inch or the 65 inch or maybe the 77 that's coming out soon. Now it's worth to invest in the Sony X800 if you want the most out of this TV though. Although it does look better in person than it does here on YouTube, check out these few clips I recorded with The Revenant, La La Land, and Goodfellas running on the A1E. Picture quality is the best, as I said before. Although the HDR doesn't quite reach the 1000 nits, it does get very close. The glass panel gives it a feeling of a great organic quality that's much like plasma, and it's easily visible from the sides, you know, good viewing angles. However, this panel that I have, and a few other people that I know, they have a little yellow stain in the upper left portion. I believe this could be due to an early production run for this set, where the particular third party's OLED manufacturing kinks haven't been fully ironed out. We usually see this phenomenon on all white screens and other moments such as in the movie Shallows when there's a bright sky in that area. But as I said before, regardless, everything I throw at this TV, it looks amazing. It is a Sony 4K, so the reality creation engine makes everything look good. And for those purists out there who turn that feature off on this OLED, well, what's the point of buying the Sony version? You should have just bought the LG. But I mentioned sound at the beginning, and it is awesome. I do have a Denon 4300 receiver and two DevTech 9020 bipolar speakers. You know, sometimes I don't feel like switching all the inputs to the Denon and juggling remotes. And the sound in this TV is more than enough for everyday use, so why not just use that? The acoustic surface offers clean sound, while the bass driver built into the stand is warm enough at any volume below 60. But above that, it does sound a little shrill. I do have this mounted on the wall, as you can see, and I have no issues. Never had I had to turn up the volume because it was too low to hear what people were saying. Whether that be in a film or a Netflix series, didn't matter. Gaming, doesn't matter. And no, the frequency of the sound will not crack the screen because the bass is in the back detached from the screen. Now, I used to have the Sony XA50C, the 55 inch, and the sound was terrible. But within the past month, I haven't used my Denon receiver as much as I used to with the, with the 55A50C. You know, I kind of want a much simpler user experience and the Sony A1E provides me that, especially with the remote. But I do say that with an asterisk. This is an Android TV, and while I am an Apple guy, I've let these Sony TVs into my house as the only exception to not owning any Android devices. And yes, the processing is outstanding, which is the reason why I chose this over the LG C7. And yes, the 14-bit engine that removes banding without adding additional artifacts is truly a top shelf feature, as is the extended dynamic range. I can keep going on and on and on. This is a contrasty panel, and those features just make it much more contrasty. But, and that's a big but, it seems as though that processing doesn't extend fully into running the Android platform smooth as butter, smooth as my iPhone. Maybe I shouldn't expect too much. But don't get me wrong, the voice search is amazing on this remote. It always recognizes what I'm trying to say, but there's times where I press the volume up and down on the controller and it feels a bit laggy. This remote does have a good design though. Uh, I think somebody had a question about this remote and it was why is it shaped the way it is or why are the buttons the way they are? Um, well, if you take a look here, I can go like this and it's basically waterproof, right? I will say that Android opened my eyes to the voice search though, uh, it is very accurate. If you want Kodi, you can get that on here. It may not look as good as a 4K Blu-ray, but it's convenient. But uh, speaking of convenience, that's what I like about the X800 player, you know. Uh, with this set, I can use, with this remote and this set, I can use that remote to control the X800, thanks to Bravia Sync, 
pause it, fast forward it, do all that fun stuff. From that point, I could use the same remote that came with the TV to control the Sony 4K Blu-ray player. And Bravia Sync also allows me to control my Denon receiver, but not fully as some features are accessible only with the Denon remote. You know, at first I didn't like the Sony remote, like I said, but as you saw, I was able to spray it down, hose it down, no problem. So if somebody spills something on the remote or anything like that, it's not gonna break only at the top. So don't submerge it or anything like that. This TV does play a variety of video, music, and picture files via the USB port. And although my TV is wall mounted, it really isn't that much of an issue to connect a flash drive since the inputs face down. All I have to do is tilt the TV up a little bit, plug it in the USB, and that's it. I can play whatever I want using the Bravia remote. Now there are a good amount of connections on the TV as well with ports ranging from your vintage yellow cable for like your old game systems for all you collectors out there to an infrared port for your cable box if you want something like that hidden. You know I mentioned gamers and for those gamers out there wondering if this is a really good gaming TV for today's users I'd say yeah it's a good gaming TV but only if you're casual gaming. I used an Xbox One to test this, the original one that only outputs 1080p and I also had a friend come over who's better than I am at games and he tested out the TV too. Now you will be able to na nail simple combos in Injustice 2, but you're not going to be tournament ready with this thing, I'll tell you that right now. In my opinion, leave that to like a monitor like an Asus or a BenQ and leave the A1E to single player and story games. Connecting my Mac to the TV works out just fine with a 3840 by 2160 at 30Hz resolution or a 24Hz resolution being a usable kind of you know desktop working environment. I don't have a PC as you would expect it, so I can't you know, push this thing too far. Overall, is this really the best TV money can buy? I'm gonna say yes. The software does leave a little bit to be desired, but that should be fixed with firmware updates. Next time Android updates to probably 8.0, that by the end of this year or next, it's gonna be most likely better. The picture quality, the sound quality, and the design definitely warrants the $5,000 price tag in my opinion. There truly is nothing out there like it. You take a look at this TV from the side, from the front, from the back, it's going to look good no matter where you look at it, even when you have a good picture. Good examples of 4K Blu-rays that I believe really make this A1E shine, or any other 4K TV for that matter, are the ones I showed you today, and I also have some more in the description below. If you have any other technical questions about what picture settings I use and why, feel free to leave a comment below, and also don't forget to like and subscribe, so I can be more inclined to do things like this, you know, these type of user experience reviews. Thanks for watching.